This is going to be a bit of a theoretical video, but it is important to talk about. Now, I'm going to be sort of describing this at a high level, so it should be language independent. But I've just been thinking recently about the one of the fundamental problems with rendering, which is that we've got all of these different objects. So we've got pipelines like shaders. We've got, uh, let me call this, yeah, vertex data, like index buffers, vertex buffers, all that sort of stuff. And we've also got textures. And one model may use a whole lot of these different things. So recently I made a WGPU video on OBJ models, and those OBJ models had a variety of different materials. So they had like sub meshes, and those sub meshes, some of them were just colored, and some of them were textured. And the approach that I took is I sort of just recorded all of the sub meshes with their different materials in the OBJ model struct, basically. And then when I went to render it on the fly, I sort of picked out, okay, this is the pipeline that we need to use. And that involves a lot of state switching at runtime, which is one solution to having a very flexible system. But it may not be ideal because it involves sort of changing state a lot. So the point I'm getting somewhere, the point I'm getting to is how do we wrangle all of this stuff together while still keeping a flexible system? I want to design some sort of system that can look through the scene, look at the different objects, extract the parameters to draw, and then root those into different sets. And then the renderer system will sort of look through the sets, do the state changes that it needs to do, and perform those draw calls. That's the basic idea. So let's say that we're describing some sort of draw call object. Really what we need is let's go, let's say just for simplicity that we're dealing with indexed drawing. So we need in order to draw, yeah, first index and index count. And let's say that we're also potentially later on gonna do instanced rendering in which case we would also have a first instance and an instance count, but it's just unsigned integers. So this is just a collection of integers. That's the parameters that we can read back later on when we want to draw, provided that all of our state has been bound correctly. So there's like two stages. Um, the first stage is to traverse the scene and wah, scene, there we have it. Okay, so our scene is represented in some way. Um, often I'll just have a scene object with a list of objects of all different types, and we can just traverse that list linearly. Um, another approach is to do a scene graph where we have a hierarchical, hierarchical representation of objects or something like that. But somehow we're gonna look at all the objects in our scene one by one. We're gonna determine if the object is visible somehow. And then if that object is visible, we're gonna record the data used to draw it, okay? And that'll give us like some sort of set of draw calls. So it could be something like, let's say we have, and I'm just gonna write this in Python for convenience, doesn't matter too much. We have some sort of dictionary where first up we've got a pipeline type as our key. And then within that, we've got another dictionary, which is the object type. And then we've got some sort of list of draw calls, something like that. So again, I'm just writing this in Python for convenience. Um, but the idea is the first key is the type of pipeline which is being bound. 
and then we access that and then we've got some sort of dictionary where the key is the type of object being bound because usually the mesh data and the texture data is one for one whereas you know an object there may be many pipelines involved in rendering one object um, but then once we've set the pipeline type and we've set the mesh and material then we just got a list of draw calls to execute so the next step is sort of uh, we'll go for each pipeline we'll go and bind to that pipeline you know use the shader in OpenGL something like that whatever API you're using um, then for each mesh uh, we'll bind mesh and material and then for each draw call we'll we'll do the draw call okay so that is and this is the um, scene traversal and this is the scene wow render we've almost got like a unified system here something where you know we make the renderer and then the renderer can sort of sort of consume any type of data and handle it pretty well um, there's just sort of two caveats to that one caveat is we might want to uh, possibly if I can write we might want to order the pipelines so here we're consuming a dictionary where the first key is pipeline type but that rendering may not happen in an automatic order like it may not be arbitrary we may want to do some shaders before some other shaders the classic example here would be if we have some like 3d world rendering and then some 2d GUI layer on top of that or um, something or something so we could either in the renderer go through by hand pick out a specific pipeline do everything for that pipeline and like have a preset order or within our pipeline data structure we could have some sort of like priority or some sort of way of, of like ordering things or some sort of set of pipelines which need to be done like this set of pipelines first and then this other set something like that that's implementation details but it is something to bear in mind and then another thing to bear in mind is you'll note I'm not talking about uniforms or bind groups or descriptors anywhere here um, but they do need to be bound in some way so let's say for instance that my objects are just going to bind a model transform for every object like the most naive way possible well that binding could be happening here or let's say for instance that my set of transforms is being put on a storage buffer or a uniform buffer or something like that and then that is being sort of indexed by the instance number well in that case we would be binding at the per object type well let's say we've got something like some sort of view projection matrix or something which is roughly the same but it may change between pipelines well then we've got another binding scope so what I'm getting at is that at each of these stages we could possibly bind some data so it's important to have some sort of way of managing and dealing with uh, bind scopes so it could be something like here instead of just a dictionary and then continue we could insert some metadata which is like um, I don't know like some sort of something but basically some sort of dictionary where we've got um, a uniform type and then some sort of object probably a numpy array 
in the Python case, but it doesn't matter. It could be anything, it could be a void pointer, but anything which can then be bound to a uniform or a descriptor or something like that. Um, but to have those things together. And then likewise to have something like this in here together as well. I hope this makes sense. Let me say it a little more practically. So first we pick out a type, a pipeline type. Pipeline type three, that's my 3D world shader. Well, then I've got two things associated with that. I've got the set of all like the metadata with uh, which needs to be bound. So when I look in there, I'll be able to see, okay, for this type of uniform, we're going to bind this void pointer of some sort, this object of some sort. And then I can have some way to go into my shader and say, okay, you're binding this uniform type. It's this data, do it. And then, so I pick my pipeline type. I bind all the stuff which is bound at the per pipeline level. Then I go in and I go object type by object type. So now I'm doing object type seven. That's my monkey head. So then I'll have, as well as this list of draw calls, another set of like, hey, this is a set of uniforms which need to be bound when we do the monkey head or something like that. Look, I hope this makes sense. It's a little theoretical, but um, I think this is an important step to go from a bespoke renderer to something which is flexible, but still efficient. That'll be it for now. Hope you have fun and I'll see you again soon.